Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Gay marriage. Are we being hoodwinked over this controversial legislation? EU budget austerity will upset an already delicate economic balance in Wales. An EU guide. How to catch fish, kill them and then throw them away. E NICER tech police announce draconian new powers. Plus, rioters give two fingers to British legal system and stay put. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, leading the page we have this succinct and clear article written by Trevor Coleman, MEP. The article looks at the recent foray over the issue of gay marriage. Let me firstly say that I am opposed to gay marriage. Now that's going to be controversial, but of course I could be just testing the premise that we live in a free and democratic society, but I don't believe that either. Civil partnerships, common law, husband and wife, and recognising as legal the sanctity of marriage as a religious ceremony is completely okay with me. But the church and the state must be kept separate, and this legislation breaches that constitutional mandate. However, I digress. The point Trevor clearly highlights is that this legislation, which was not even in the Conservative Manifesto, is actually sent down upon us from a higher authority in the EU. This article demonstrates some excellent examples of the clandestine power structure at work. EU budget reforms mean that overall spending availability will be cut by at least 3%. Wales meets much of the criteria to claim EU objective funding and so the budget cuts will have a direct impact on the country and its people. Couple that with the announcement from the Bank of England that inflation is expected to top 3% in the summer and 2013 looks like a tough year. The article carries the full details but one aspect I spotted was the shift in rhetoric. You'll notice the line, the Welsh Government. Hmm, interesting. So they're governing themselves then are they? Firstly, I thought it was the Welsh Assembly. Second, and more importantly, there is a pattern forming here. The movement for independence in Scotland, will Wales be next? How can these nations claim to seek independence when almost all of their laws are made from the higher authority in the EU? Fairly quietly it was announced between Manuel Barroso and Obama that the USA and EU will begin discussing the arrangements for an economic community trade deal between them. Ooh, I suddenly got that funny feeling of deja vu. Haven't I seen this done somewhere before? It's a fair statement to say the common fisheries policy is insane. It's a big controversial policy and even a scratch at the service leaves me with a stark look of confusion on my face. This article takes an in-depth look at the campaign Hugh Fernley Whittingstall has undertaken to get the deaf dumb blind kids in the EU Parliament to pay attention to what is frankly an ecological disaster. If I'm right, I don't think the behemoth of ignorance in the EU will move quickly enough or will even understand that the knowledge about fish stocks maintenance and ecological balance cannot be found in the heads of pinstripe suited Eurokleptocrats. Ultimately, the seas will self-regulate the fishing industry with the collapse of fish stocks and the death of the industry. See coal, steel and other primary industries for examples. Well, my word, it's here already. You'll know from my previous shows that I have been highlighting the movements by the EU to centralise control and garner state regulatory powers over the internet. It is critical to the overall goals of the EU that this free and open portal to the hive mind of the collective be closed off. The internet makes us, the people, powerful. It enables us to share huge amounts of information rapidly, to search the zettabytes of knowledge and get succinct on-target answers, and it enables us to raise awareness, create transparency and scrutinise the affairs of government. These are not desirable to the EU collective. So here is the mechanism that binds all the legislation and directives together. The EU call it ENISA, -E ENISA, the European Network and Information Security Agency. I call it the Tech Stapo, and here's why. I quote, 
a European super-spying agency is to be granted draconian powers to access a vast range of personal information, including medical data, criminal records, emails, and the websites we visit. You can bet that if they don't like what you're looking at, you'll get a new label, cyber terrorist. The term has hardly been heard, but it's in use in the halls of the EU Parliament and the chambers of the Council. Are you ready to get involved yet? Are you ready to speak out and say no? The UK government has become like that big shock kid we all knew at school. Imaginative, but impotent. It seems these days our ministers spout a lot of rhetoric, but no longer have the power to act. Interestingly, when they do act, it more often turns out in our investigation that they have not been visionary in their policy making, nor are they carrying out the wishes of their constituency or electorate. They're simply implementing the directives sent down from the 27 rulers of Mordor in the EU Commission. What a sorry joke and mockery this makes of democracy. This article covers the riots in London. As the mainstream media puts it, well, for the record, there were riots in cities across England. Our ministers promised to get tough on the riots and would use the full force of the law. Well, they discovered that the full force of the UK law couldn't blow its way out of a paper bag because it just gets overruled by EU law. Check out the full article. Links are below. Today in our video library, Dr Eric Edmund, formerly of the Bank of England, returns with episode 5 of Eric's Analysis. In today's show, Eric takes a look at the fear, uncertainty and doubt that is being played out by British politicians and those from the USA too. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.